our survey. And in case you didn't notice, Mark just started recording. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> after we did our initial public engagement, we had a public meeting, shared the information with people from the town and confirmed that what we had heard was accurate. We took that information, shared it with our survey firm, and then we did a survey. The purpose of the survey was to gather more feedback from the community related to parks, recreation facilities, amenities, future planning, communication, and more. Uh, the research effort and subsequent analysis were designed to assist the town in developing a plan that reflects the community's needs and desires. Lisa, myself, Dan, and one of Dan's staff, uh, we visited the town several times. Uh, we were there for an interview. We were there for the kickoff. We were there for several days for public engagement. We were there again for findings. Dan's team was there several other times. During the survey, we mailed out 5,500 postcards and 4,002 mailed surveys to encourage people to take the survey. We received a total of 501 surveys. 330 of them were what are called invitation surveys. Those were randomly mailed to people and that allows it to be statistically valid. And we had a error margin of 5.4%, which is very good. You try to be under 10. We also did an open link survey where anyone in the community who wasn't mailed a survey could take the survey. And we had 171 people take the survey. So we had the initial public engagement and the survey, and then all of our observations, our meetings with staff were all part of things that helped build the plan. These are the key findings that came out of the survey. Uh, in general, the, the two responses between the open link and the invitation survey were very similar. So that's a positive finding. It indicates there's kind of consensus across the two, the two samples. Um, there were higher levels of participation and satisfaction with programs and services. About three quarters of the people indicated that they were uh, satisfied on the invite and 87% on the open link. Uh, the quality of parks and facilities rated a 3.6 on a one to five scale with five being excellent. We always try to be above three, so that was a good rating. Residents are most satisfied with the parks, um, more so than the facilities, and those had a 3.9 rating. Trails and pathways, uh, were one of the most frequently used amenities. Um, about 15 to 17% said they use them at least once a week. And a total of 70% of the invite samples say they use hiking trails and 60% walking, jogging in the pedestrian pathway. So that, that was one of our goals that came out of this was connectivity. Outdoor recreation was highly important. Um, Open space, natural areas rated high, as well as trails and pathways again. Uh, enhancing the maintenance of your parks and facilities and aquatic facilities would increase the use of parks and recreation. That was a finding. Uh, and there's room to improve communication about parks, recreation, facility, and services. Uh, you, the town scored 3.1 on the uh, invite sample, we always hear this, that there's always room for improvement in communication. Uh, so it's not anything to be overly worried about, but it is something that we have recommendations for and, and should be a focus. And then some more key findings, the future needs, both samples, increasing trail and pathway connectivity, improving existing indoor facilities, desire to add a new aquatics facility or an indoor pool, and improve access to natural bodies of water. Future values that are most important to the invite sample were conservation and protection of natural resources and providing affordable activities and facilities, providing a high level of safety and security and focusing on what you have was also important. When asked how people would allocate $100 across recreation facilities, services, or programs, if they had that to allocate, 
both the invite and the open link indicated they'd spend the most amount of money on trails and pathways and swimming pools, followed by a recreation center. So based on that, our analysis, our meetings with staff, our uh, program analysis, our everything we did, we developed these eight goals and we shared these with Mark and his team when we came for findings and envisioning. And uh, these were the eight that were settled upon. So we have a, a goal to improve the organizational efficiency, a goal to continue to improve programs and service delivery, a goal to improve and expand facilities, parks and amenities, a goal to address ADA concerns, <clears throat> a goal to increase financial opportunities, a goal to improve maintenance and operations, a goal to improve diversity, equity, and inclusion, and a goal for community connectivity. And Mark, you mentioned before when we were starting that you've already started working to write some grants based on these goals? Yes, yeah. that's correct. Okay. Every goal then has objectives and actions. And I'm just showing you a sample. And to help with your uh, future uh, NA, NRPA and CAPRA accreditation, we identified where every one of our objectives match up with one of the goals from your park and recreation strategic initiatives. So you'll see there's an objective and then it, there's in parentheses where it matches up. And then every objective has multiple action items and the action items give you details of what you could consider doing, a capital cost if there's one involved, operational impact if there's one involved and a time frame to complete. And these are in short term, like zero to two years, midterm three to five, long term five to 10. Ongoing is something you should continue to do. And the recommendations, you know, we had some that were based on compliance, some on maintenance, some on upgrades, some are just overall comprehensive. We also developed an implementation plan that laid out how you could go about implementing the recommendations in the plan and how you could communicate and uh, report back to the community and tell your story. So that's what we're planning to show the town council. I have one that again has another 40 slides and there's more slides on the, the survey and level of service and all of that. Um, I believe the final report draft, which we knew we we're gonna need some edits was shared with you. I have that available and I could open that up and go through it and show you things in more detail and take comments and questions, take comments and questions on the PowerPoint, whatever you would like. Does anybody have any questions for Tom? Yeah, Tom, Jim Steffes, mm -hmm. can you hear me? Okay. I can. Hey, has anybody thought of uh, sending out kind of uh, the communication via like push notifications? I mean, you know, we we ask people to to um, to do it on their own, more or less. Uh, you know, they have to look into maybe the town's website or asking them to read, you know, some uh, uh, publication or newsletter that might come to their house. It might not. It might get lost in a pile. But yeah, you know, it seems to me these days everybody just pushes stuff into your email. Um, why wouldn't the town do it? It's I think the town of, uh, does some of that. And I'm going to show you here is the other PowerPoint uh, that we, the longer one with all the information. And what's odd, every time people do that, we do this, we ask people how effective it is. And you can see that it was, as I said, a three, a 3.5 overall average 3.3. So some people were satisfied in the middle. Some thought it was really good. Some thought it wasn't as good. We asked, what is the best way to receive communication? Email, activity guide brochure, social media, town newsletter, uh, town website. And then I'm not sure if I have this one here. I didn't. 
And then we have another slide that we ask is, this is how you want to receive it. How are you receiving it? And they answer the same thing. So people are, seem to get the, the information the way they want it. It's that we're just so busy today and everything that, you know, I want it. I want you to tell me what I need to know now, and I don't want to have to go look for it or find it. But um, we can, when we look at the report, we can look and see. But I believe in our our recommendations that that is uh, a recommendation to improve the the marketing plan. So, you know, we can take note of that. And I'm sure Mark has taken note of, you know, what you could do from a push standpoint. So if they're so if they're saying they're satisfied, then what is the one and a half? as opposed to the three, is the one and a half just kind of people just never well, give fours and fives to anything? 298 people answered this question on the invite sample and 136 answered it on the open link. Yeah. And 434 total people. And out of the 434, approximately 10% or about 43 people said it wasn't effective at all. Huh. And we have, uh, we also have pages of, people had the opportunity to, to add a comment. And we read through all of those and we've shared them. It's a part of the uh, uh, appendix of the report. And so another 12% or roughly another 30 people, you know, rated it too. 36%, which would be somewhere in the neighborhood, 160 people, you know, said it was a three, 26%, more than a hundred said it was good. And 16%, which is roughly, 75 or 80 people thought it was very effective. So it, the communication is a tough one all the time. Yeah, okay. Well, so, so almost 25% said it was really not good. Pardon me? So uh, you said there were 10% that said it was really bad, and then 12% um, said so, it was so bad, two. I guess, so, is the way yeah, I just 22%. Yeah, so... so so that's almost 25%. So that is that like, do we know why? It's human nature. That's We see this in almost every one of these studies that we do. Some people are going to not be happy no matter what. This isn't bad. I mean, it would be nice if it was a four, but it, as well as you see 22% said it wasn't good, 42%, a higher percentage said it's very good or very effective, right. these here. And 36% right. are kind of down the middle. But it just means that yes, you need to be you know, constantly monitoring your communication, trying to switch it up, trying different things, asking people what's working. Mark does things like he follows the NRPA Connect and there's posts there that I'm sure he's reading where you know people are saying, hey, we just came up with this new idea on how we're communicating and, and then you try to follow through with some of those. Yeah. I, I was, I'm only asking the question because it seems to me that the most effective way to improve the communication plan is to go after that 22% of the people and why they said what they were instead of guessing um, and, and going <laughs> after the other 78% that seemed to be more or less happy. Yeah. You know, it might be with the way to go. With a survey, there's no way to know who those 22% are. Right. Yeah. Hmm. But we could ask some more questions, but... Okay. I have one comment about uh, communication. I think one of the challenges we have is using different social media channels. The information needs to be the same across all. Because occasionally, and I... I I think in general, communication is good, and I use the printed materials as well as online. But I will sometimes not know about an event because it was posted on a social media platform that I don't necessarily use on a regular basis. And I think if we can make sure the information is consistently spread through all the channels that are in use, that we could improve communication. The other issue is there's a whole section of the population, generally senior, who don't use social media at all. And that, that's one of the toughest things with print media is 
the time between when you draft it, write it, and send it to the printer and send it out, there's nothing you can do to adjust if you add a, an event or something. Mm -hmm. But I do think that uh, maybe there needs to be something where in the print media it, it indicates where you could call for the latest information or you know maybe uh, also trying to get some of the things that it, maybe a partnership uh, for some of those things that as you say, the, the, I think you mentioned seniors might not do the same social media. Maybe there mm -hmm. needs to be some form of uh, partnership where you're promoting the things for seniors that it's done through a, I don't know if there's a specific uh, radio station people are listening to or TV station or news. But as Mark knows, when he was trying to promote this plan, it's hard to get the those people to run stories that, in their opinion, maybe don't sell newspapers. <laughs> but it's a struggle yeah. mm. but maybe um you know maybe uh with your help elizabeth and jim you 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 can give some information to to mark as to you know maybe there's ways that flyers can be put up places when something is added after it's after the print brochure has gone out where you know people go whether it's thrive i think you're already doing it at thrive 55 but maybe there's some other places that things could be posted or promoted. Well, we've made use of uh, the Groton Patch, which is an online uh, chat room, I guess. I, I don't know quite how to qualify it. Um, and I think there are other things like that we could explore more too. Okay. Any other questions for Tom? Yeah, Mark, I got one for you. So, so you know, if we look through the 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 like the 200 page document we got right and I don't, I don't plan to go through the whole thing, but when you get to the implementation section, right? So it's about maybe 10 pages or so like that. And it's got a bunch of different objectives. Um, I don't, not expect an answer tonight, but it, I would like to understand. And do we give you feedback as the, as the um, committee and like, you know, there's probably, I don't know, 30, 50 items in here. Some of them cost money. Some of them are staff time. Or do you, are you going to come to us with a recommendation of which one you think you're going to burn down in your top maybe 20? Um, or should we recommend that to you or what? You know, like obviously studies get us to where we need to go next, but then it's uh, rubber meets the road of what we actually do with them. So what what's the next step there? Well, I think it would be a combination of both, you know, looking, talking with the team, knowing what resources we have, um, and kind of prioritizing those different recommendations. Uh, you know, some are some are an easy lift and, and some are more difficult, but also taking input from the commission um, as to their thoughts. Um, you know, you, the, one of the goal or one of the uh, objectives of the commission is to kind of be the eyes and ears um, of the community beyond what we hear. And so, you know, bringing your perspective uh, is important and, and between between the two groups coming up, coming up with a plan. I got to run downstairs and get my power cord because I, it says my computer's about to shut down. I'll be right back. Uh, does anybody have any other questions for Tom? Tom, after uh, Mark sent this to us um, and having the opportunity and time to read it, uh, you fellas did a, a really good job. Thank you. You're welcome. We did go back and find a few things that were errors in the, the draft that Mark had given you. A couple Mark found, a couple we found. So mm -hmm. we've addressed them all. And this one here is a, it, that I sent to Mark this morning is a cleaner copy. Um, I believe the plan is after tonight, Mark is going to share this with the town council. And then uh, we have a meeting with them next week. And then another meeting uh, where I come October 2nd uh, to town. And uh, again, as we're, if you find anything in it, an error, you know, miswording or something, uh, let us know. These documents are 
um, a little difficult after you've been writing them to review them. Your mind reads what it thinks it's supposed right. to say. Yeah. And so sometimes it, you know, we'll go from objective 1.4 to 1.6 and, and we didn't put in a 1.5 or something, but we've had a lot of different people look at this and we, we hopefully have, have caught everything and so forth. And, and staff are still looking um, at the whole document. I've, I've given them until the 26th, which is what, what next Tuesday. Um, so I've already had some feedback and I'm pulling together a list and we'll send that off to Tom sometime next week. So Mark, continue my kind of question line too. When we when when it gets put into the council and like the public, it, that's just for info. There's are there, is there any action that occurs when it gets to the council? Like, does, is there an approval step? Is there like does the council do something, or is it just really more for like, hey, this is what we got? Um, what usually occurs? No, our goal is to have the con have the council adopt this plan, meaning that they they've endorsed it, and um, I, I don't want them just to look at it and say, oh, this is nice. I I want them to, you know, my goal is to, for them to say, yes, we uh, we support and, and recommend this document. And, and that's actually um, one of the other agenda items is the recreation master plan letter of recommendation. I'm, I'm hoping that the commission will write a letter to the council uh, stating the fact that they would like to see this plan adopted. And if it gets adopted, you can kind of maybe ask us what you want us to do in a second. But if it gets adopted, I assume that there's no like funding that comes with just like, hey, this is the this is the strategic direction we want to take, and this is kind of like outlined. If that's what it means when it gets adopted, for my yes. sake. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't. It, it's not committing to you know the different items that that Tom and his group have identified. Um, you know, these are all recommendations. Um, we're just asking for the council to accept these recommendations and, and then um, moving forward, um, you know, the department will work on implementing them um, with hopefully support of the council. I would think the other thing is if we can have the council adopt the plan, we can also say that going forward when we are proposing, or you, Mark, as the director, are proposing you know, capital improvements or new programs, that it's understood that the justification for those expenditures or requests will be coming from the master plan. Now, this is, in fact, going to serve as the um, foundation for everything going forward, so that, in a way, we're saying to the town council, if you adopt this, then you agree that this is a valid rationale for both capital and operating expense. Yes, exactly. But again, it doesn't commit them, you know, uh, there's lots of different interests among lots of different departments, um, lots of different priorities and projects. And, you know, uh, adopting this doesn't Put us at the front of the line, but um, yeah, right. But by the same token, they can't question your rationale for something, right? If they've accepted this as a valid study, right? Yeah, one and, of the examples is Mark. That you know, you when we worked with you, you had us figure out the what you should be seeking per capita here in this box. You know, right. so that that's you know, a researched and proven number that, you know, you can look at your population and indicate that, you know, that's what you should be. This is how much money you should be having in your account based on your, <clears throat> based on this plan and comparisons to other similar communities. And we did that in a couple of places like that. I didn't mean to interrupt you, Mark. Same over here, you know, per acre, how much you should be spending. So that, that should help you in the future. Yeah, and I fully intend to reference this document um, for the next five to eight years.
Any other questions for Tom or Mark regarding the plan? I'm good with a question. I propose, and I know this is an official proposal for our own council. Mark, I propose, an, and I can make like a spreadsheet or some email, but I think it'd be really good if we could get like, um, maybe from the Parks and Rec perspective and then from each commissioner, maybe we, we can review this next meeting. We go over like the top 10, if everyone kind of say votes in their top 10, and then Mark, you give us the items that are just go do items, like ones that um, maybe you just plan to implement anyway, like there's not really a cost to them. They're just, hey, these are things that are, that are good to do, no cost, and it's gonna go do. Then everyone kind of gives their top 10 um, investment type ones. And those investments could be, Hard to just go do because we won't know what it is next week, but maybe it's good to do that and compare, and that gives us a good recommendation up for the future, Mark. And um, I would be willing to take that on as a homework assignment. I can even make a template for everyone to fill out if we want, but I'm opening it up to the other members to see if that's something they're interested in. I would be, I think it'd be valuable. Over. So, I, I'm Mike, I'm, I'm a bit confused as to um what you're saying are you saying we take the top 10 things that we individually like about the plan that we want to focus on is is that is that what you're saying yes in a way if you go to page if you go to the um uh the implementation section so it's on page 113 of the big you know 200 page plan for example it yeah. starts with goals and objectives and there's like you know, there's like, for example, 1.1A and then 1.1B, and there's a bunch of different items in there. And there's probably 50 of them from that page, you know, for the next 20 pages. We would take our top 10 from that, I'll say 50 list. I don't really know what how many, how big the list is, but, um, right. and then propose that. It's really, th those are like the implementable items. The rest of the plan is like talking about what's good, what's bad, but it doesn't have quantifiable minimum items in my opinion. But that's my proposal if, if you guys like it or want to do it. Does anybody have any thoughts about what Mike is saying? I, for one, like the plan. Um, I would not, I would prefer not to dissect it right now, uh, but that's my opinion. And uh, I'm sure we have a number of other people that have opinions on it as well. Mark, how do you feel about that? Um, there's still a, there's the public input session coming up uh, in a few weeks, uh, and there could be some more tweaks. Um, yeah, I'm not sure that uh, it's a short time between this meeting and the next meeting because we're, um, we're, Normally our meeting would have been last week. So we've got kind of a short window and um, I'd like to spend some time with the staff after they've fully reviewed this to <clears throat> kind of identify what their priorities are. And I'm not sure that I can pull that together in in just a couple of weeks. And, and one thing I was gonna bring up, uh, for the October meeting, I'm actually gonna be in Dallas at a conference, so everything is going to go out early. Um, I'll plan to hold the meeting. I'll just have to do it from my phone. Um, and so it, it would be long term. I like the idea, but it's a little I think it's a little too quick for me to try to do that. Tom, go ahead. If I could just maybe Mike help you with a little perspective, the things you're seeing on the screen here. Many of them do not have a cost other than just the effort of the staff doing it. So I think if you all went in and, and looked through this, uh, I'm not sure if that's gonna be quite as beneficial. If you go down to the actual action plan, you can see there are some things that do have a cost. If that's, because you mentioned a couple of times funding and, and money, you can see a lot of these don't have any, any true costs. They're just things, that you, we're recommending that they change how they do things. So right. I, I, what typically just giving you information, I'm not saying I'm right in any matter, but typically as Mark said, uh, 
a body like yours is recommending that this goes to the the town council that you you know that you support it and you're asking them to approve it and then should that be approved then typically you guys all get together and you look through this and you identify things that might have a cost and and talk about those where the ones that don't have a cost typically you know are simpler things to do i don't know if that helped at all or i didn't want to interfere or anything i was just trying to give you a perspective of what we see in all these meetings yeah and we we do we do have the uh, you know we'll start working on the budget probably sometime in november it's due to the town manager the middle of january so uh, there may be there will be an opportunity moving forward to talk about some of these items that we think should appear uh, either in a, in a capital improvement project or or the operating budget, you know, for for next fiscal year. Yeah, so maybe my question is just a little little early, Mark. I'm I'm good. Maybe you know you do your diligence, and if you need you know more time than between now and the next meeting, that's fine. Maybe you come to us with what you're just going to go do, and then we look at what's left, and then maybe we kind of bring my action up at that point, you know, I'm, I'm fine with that. Good, okay. good for now. Okay. Any other questions for Tom and Mark regarding the plan? Well, Tom, uh, thank you very, thank you very much. You're welcome. Elizabeth, were you gonna? That's okay, I can hold it. Okay. It's, it's, I've had it. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks, Tom. Thank You're you. Welcome. Let me know um, what you need. And if not, I'll see you on next Thursday, I think it is. Uh, Tuesday. Or it could be Tuesday. It's not my calendar. It's yeah, yeah. yeah. Tuesday. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then yeah. we'll be in touch. Okay. Okay. Thank Terrific. you, everyone. Bye-bye, Tom. Bye. Bye. Tom. Night. Bye. Okay. Uh, approval of minutes. Um, is somebody taking minutes? Yes, I am. Okay. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you. Sort of. I may need some help. <laughs> <laughs> Fill in the blanks. Okay. Well, uh, Mark, I want to thank you for, I don't know, you were going to get your uh, your charger uh, but I was telling everybody I really appreciated you getting the plan in the mail, uh, in email from you, so we could uh, really look at it and read it, and that was that was good. That was good. Yeah, it it, it took a couple of tries. It, it, as you saw, it's a really large document. Yes, it was. First, and the first time I tried to send it, I got emails back from everybody, you know, saying. The file was too large. And so then I put it in a zip file and I thought, okay, well, maybe this will work. And then I got six more emails. And so, uh, you know, over, so I tried to send it out last week, uh, yeah. knowing that it would take a while to go through all of this. And so I finally was able to do it. And yeah. No, it was appreciated. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we need to approve minutes. Uh, would it would someone like to make a motion? Or is there anything that we need to discuss about them? Is this a July one that that we're talking about? Um, yes. Yes. Um, the old, I just had one question on it because I, I don't think I was in the July meeting. Um, there was one section in it, and I was trying to open up, but it was it was one of the beginning ones. It was talking about um, you know the expansion of uh, like the the. I think it was like a 30,000 square feet of park open space, but there was an item in there that was talked about with um, like schools and defining what, what the schools I'll say own, maintain or counts against them versus the parks. Was that discussed? And do we have a clear boundary line? Like what's the schools and what's the parks and rec? Uh, so I, I think that was Tom Olson from the conservation commission. Uh, I think so. And he, Yes, and the Tom was asking for to have the 
uh, park rules and regulations updated. Um, it, at the beginning of that document, there are um, properties that are identified. Um, Tom has spent quite a bit of time going over the records. There are properties that we now are responsible for that aren't on that list. There are other properties that um, sh uh, shouldn't be on the list. And so he was asking for us to update that. Uh, and I have been working on that uh, and I plan to um, share that with the with the commission at the October meeting. Okay. Oh, wait. I was really asking more from a funding perspective, like, you know, if we have more properties than they think we have, how's our funding work? So I'll wait to hold anything until you oh. share it with us and go from there. Okay. I understand that wasn't the point of the meeting last time, but that was my question. So I'll, I'll hold questions until next meeting. Okay. So just so that I am clear, you're wondering if we're losing how funding impacts, how the number of properties impacts our funding. Is that? Yeah. So exactly. So I'm thinking like, let's just say that we had 20 properties by, by, by the books. Right. But you really yeah. have 30 properties to maintain. Is there money that is not coming to the parks and rec because we have more to maintain than people think. And that money's going maybe to the school system. I'm not saying that's right or wrong, but like going to another entity because they think that they officially own it. Oh, I see. Yeah. There's, very few school properties, school properties and parks property are pretty well delineated. And okay. so money isn't going, you know, money's not going to another organization that should be coming to us because we're, we're maintaining it and, and they're not, um, yeah, okay. the, that was my question. Schools, so if, yeah, but that's the schools, Adam's good. I, I, I just want to make yeah. sure if the paper drove that, that was my question. So I'm good. I have no other okay. questions um, for the meeting minutes. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions regarding approval of minutes? Would someone like to make a motion? Elizabeth, uh, I sure. think you're muted. Sorry about uh, that. I make the movement that we accept the minutes as discussed and for July. I'll second it. So moved. Sounds good. We didn't vote, did we? We didn't vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> Aye. And sound, any nays? Nope. Good. Okay, so moved. Um, citizens, petitions, and comments. Does anybody have any people that have commented or or approached them about anything? I have not. Nope. Okay. Um, town council referrals. No referrals. Okay. Um, correspondence, oh. Mike? Well, actually, sorry, Don. Um, okay. I am going to the council. When I read this, I always think of referrals coming from the council, but perhaps this could be referrals going up to the council. So um, I am going to the council on Tuesday night. Um, There'll be the Sutton Park presentation, the Barry Dunn presentation, and I'm also going with the HR director. We recently, uh, our parks leader, who'd been with us for seven years, took another, moved over to public works. And so that position is vacant. And I've been working with the director of HR um, and have proposed a, a new job position which would be manager of parks and open space. Um, previously, the parks division was being managed 25% of the time by the superintendent of the golf course, and then this parks leader position. And I have proposed that we create a full-time position, uh, a management level position uh, for the parks division. 
and she agreed with me and we're going to the council to request that they create this new position. And there would be no impact to the budget because between the two, between what we were paying the parks leader and 25% of the superintendent's salary was being paid out of parks, um, the, the salary for this one person would be less than those two other positions combined. Mark, what is the job title again, please? Uh, Manager of Parks and Open Space. Thanks. Yep. I have a general question, which is what I started to ask and realized it wasn't the right time. Um, at some of these town council meetings, Mark, is it useful to have a member of the commission join you? It, it certainly wouldn't hurt. Okay. That's, you know, maybe that's another um, role that we could support the department with, or another activity, I should say. Right. Uh, I think it's particularly important uh, during the budget process, you know, um, speaking on behalf of the department coming from a commission member, I think, um, I know the library use, utilizes the, their support uh, quite a bit during the, during the budget process. But uh, going up and, and speaking, um, you know, a lot of the council meetings as a public to be heard and um you know kind of being preemptive making making a case for something that you know i would be going to, or you know the an initiative the department's trying to move forward um would again would be helpful because i'm thinking of those three topics that you're saying you'll be discussing with the council on tuesday are biggies yes they are yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Moving along, uh, correspondence and communications. None. Uh, report, and it looks like you're on again, Mark. Okay. Uh, so I don't know if there was any questions with the report that I provided, I, I did want to share that um, we have filled our uh, community outreach coordinator position, uh, Clayton Potter, uh, who was previously an adjunct professor at Conn College, uh, started that role sometime in, I think, August. Uh, and he's doing a terrific job. And, and Dom, I think you met him the other day at the youth services uh, meeting. Uh, yes, and, I did. What and, a nice and, young man. Yes, he is. Yes. Uh, and Clayton will, will actually be joining us remotely in the October meeting just to kind of introduce himself. Right. Um, we've also hired a financial assistant to replace the vacancy that we had, and she's been here a month now and is working working out very well. And um, we have extended and received acceptance of an office of a position of um, program supervisor for the uh, for special events, and she'll be starting October sixteenth. Where will Clayton's office be, or where's his center of? Uh, so where will he work out of? He's working out of Spicer House. Okay, good. Yeah. Out of curiosity, Mark, it sounds like you guys are doing a lot of hiring, and um, and this is the only thing I know was what we did uh, within the school district when we hired uh, a teacher, an administrator principal, you name it, there was always a, a, a town representative. There was always a, a citizen or a parent 
on the hiring team. And I was wondering why the town doesn't do the same thing. Hmm. That's, uh, that's a great question, Dom, and one that I can't answer. Okay. Because I, so, I don't, I don't know the answer to. Okay. I was just, I was just curious about it. And, um, you know, whenever we hired a teacher or a principal, a superintendent, a sit there was always a parent representative, a citizen on the team. And yep. I, you guys are doing all this hiring and it might be useful to have uh, some input from the people that you're representing. Sure. Yeah, yeah. I think that's, that's a good point. Okay, moving along. Uh, the golf course, again, looks like it's doing pretty good. Yeah, golf, uh, play at the golf course continues to um, be robust. We're actually trending ahead of last year, and mm -hmm. last year was our best year. And, um, yeah, I, feedback that we're getting from most, not all, um, certainly the, the folks that are coming off the street that are playing at courses all over the state, um, feedback from them is very positive. Um, comments like, I can't believe this is a municipal course. Um, certainly all the rain has helped uh, in, in most areas to keep everything green. And um, yeah, we're just going to continue to uh, do what we're doing. And, and I'm actually very surprised. I, I thought that after COVID, we would, you know, play would drop off, but that's not the case. And, and you know, I, I do, when I go by and I go by often, uh, you see cars from Rhode Island, New York, yeah. Massachusetts. I see cars from all sorts of states there, you know, so. Yeah. You're and, doing and a good job there. And, and we've, you know, over the summer, well, late spring into the early summer, you know, we did work on six, 17 different bunkers and um, have more work planned for, I think it will be early next spring, uh, or it could be during the winter. It will depend on what kind of winter we have, um, but we could potentially, um, there's more work scheduled to do. Great. Hey, uh, Mark, uh, it's Jim. Yes. Yep. Just uh, one question to follow up with Eric, uh, the superintendent. Um, I, last week, uh, no, I guess it was it was this week was uh, they were scheduled to punch the greens. Yes. And because of the rain, I think over the weekend, it was just too wet to punch. Yeah. Somebody somebody told me that they weren't planning on punching. Um, they weren't going to reschedule, which I thought that couldn't be true uh, because they didn't punch in the spring because the machine broke. And I always thought that was a no-no not to punch. Um, I thought the punching that was going to go on this fall was kind of, you know, the second, the, the first time in the year. And it was really going to be a big and important one because, again, we didn't punch in the spring. Could you just follow up with, with Eric on that? I'm sure yeah. I'm sure he is, but that's that's what I heard. Okay. Yeah, I I have not heard otherwise. Um and I meet with Eric and Todd on a weekly basis. Um and the last time I actually didn't meet with him this week because uh, uh Todd had a, a death in his family, but um the week before, yes, that was the plan to punch. And I know yeah. we do it every year. And, and, you know, some players don't like it because, you know, it, it impacts the green. But the long-term benefit is we've got beautiful greens. Oh, yeah. You've got, a, you've got a punch because the, yes. you get root bound if you don't punch. Right. And that's, yeah. But that's, I, I that's will... why I thought it was unusual when I heard that. Yeah, I will check with Eric and to 
And the other thing is if, if Eric now has 25% of his time, I guess now devoted to the golf course rather than the open space, is that what we're to assume? Yeah. So Eric okay. would go back to, uh, he would be managing the golf course and, you know, given the level of play that's occurring, I, I think being present requires more time than, than what he was previously able to do, having to s split the job. Right, right. Yeah, okay. Got it. Okay. By the way, I saw him yesterday <laughs> with, a, with a weed pumper. <laughs> I thought it was unusual for a superintendent to be doing that. You know, uh, and he was weeding. And, you know, kind of one of those yep. little carry things with a pump. Yeah. He right, was, right. He was on all the tea boxes, um, <laughs> spraying, spraying for individual weeds. He does a lot over there. He does, yeah. yeah. It, well, as you know, golf courses are, are labor intensive. Yeah. yeah and no sometimes it's all hands on deck. Yeah. 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 But you're right. The rain has helped a lot. It has, yes. Yeah. It certainly saved. I can't remember if we budgeted thirty or forty thousand dollars in water. Um, after last summer, we ended up increasing our budget. Thankfully, we haven't had to use that uh, money this year as much of it. Yeah, yeah, I think I saw on the news this is the 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 uh, third highest year since they've been counting on 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 rainfall in Connecticut. We're like eleven inches over the uh, the average rainfall year to date. Ooh. Yeah. Wow, that's a lot. Yeah. Okay, moving along. Uh, trails uh, and coordinating task force. Yep, we actually had uh, our, our quarterly meeting earlier uh, this evening. Um, we just the different groups shared what what they're up to uh, Groton open space is looking to buy another uh, parcel that would connect uh, sheep farm south it would there would be a larger contiguous piece of uh, property managed by Groton open space um, we talked about um, there's a luminarial walk taking place out at the cop property uh coming up in on i think on october 7th and um that was that was about it for for that we had a couple of other updates from avalonia but uh nothing of any serious consequence i did tell i did share with the group that the that we put out the bike and pedestrian master plan uh, and we only had one bidder come back. And so we are rewriting the, the request for proposals and going to send it out again um, to try to get more bidders. Okay, athletic fields. The Request for qualifications uh, to hire a consulting firm to do the final design and budget estimating uh, that closes on the 29th of this month. And once that's once those bids are in, there'll be a review team comprised of members of the athletic field task force. Um, we'll do interviews and then we'll move forward with hiring. Uh, a firm to start that um, the final design for friend. These are fields at Clodchester, uh, new fields at Clodchester, making renovations to the fields at Sutton Park, and also uh, construction of new fields at the high school to address the needs that have been identified um, by various organizations. Agency accreditation. Um, yeah, not too much to report there. I've been working through the recreation master plan 
bike and pedestrian master plan and, and trying to just keep my head above water with everything else. But um, some of those things are starting to, to get behind me. And so I'm hoping to refocus on agency accreditation. Hey, before we jump to the next section, athletic fields, Mark, you sent out something for pickleball courts and like a field, like a, yes. like a photo. Field. Yes. I, I just yep. didn't know. Are we talking about this? Because it wasn't on the agenda. Like, I assume it's under field section. Is this is this um, something that's funded or is this like info or just like voting? Like what, what what's going on? Yeah. So that was actually I shared that um because it kind of ties in with the park naming, which is under new business. All right, so I'll wait. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry that wasn't clear. Okay. Um, any unfinished business at this time? Good. Well, let's go right to the park naming. Okay. So uh, I did share with everybody uh, conceptual plans for work to be done kind of between, uh, between the library and, and Thrive. Um, for those of you, I'm assuming everybody's familiar. There's a hockey rink out there. There's um, there's an athletic field. Um, we received ARPA money to uh, make renovations to the hockey rink. Uh, we also received additional money to put in six pickleball courts. Um, and some of those renovations are also, and we also received money for a walking path that is going to kind of connect from Thrive, uh, go around the field, out behind the library and connect to an existing sidewalk uh, to try to make a loop. Um, and that will help enhance some of the walking programs uh, that we run at Thrive and also just provide another opportunity for people to, um, to get out and, and provide them a safe place to, to walk. Um, so how does that tie into park naming? Well, my thought was um, right now, you know, that the athletic field is called library field. The, uh, the hockey rink is called the arena. And my, uh, I was suggesting that we perhaps name this whole area as a park and give it a name. And so I wanted to share what was going in and then kind of uh, that kind of leads into the idea of naming that space as a park. Uh, and I did share with the commission um, the procedure for either naming or renaming a, a park or a playground and just kind of want to get your feedback um, on that idea, whether you think it's a bad idea or it's a good idea and then perhaps a discussion about how you think we should move forward with this. Cause there are a couple of different options. Um, if you think we should at all. Well, my first um, reaction is, you know, the Groton sale monument will be fronting Newtown road. And these facilities will be on the other side of the parking lots. Am I right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I, on first blush, I'm thinking we should incorporate the Groton Sale monument into whatever naming is going on. It might be an opportunity to pull it together with that theme. Okay. Yeah, I like it. So is that that's not built yet, right? I don't. I haven't been by there in like a couple weeks, but I don't remember. <laughs> Am I no, right? I, and I don't. Yeah, I'm not sure what the you're talking about the sale. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, I'm not sure what the, I think they're still in the fundraising stage and, and I don't know, you know, if they're 70% there or uh, I'm not sure where they are. Who's they, Mark? There is a committee um, that has been fundraising and kind of spearheading this whole project. Uh, I, I think Jim Streeter is on that yeah. group. I think yes. Mark... Mark Ofinger, who was the previous town manager. And Marion Galbraith, 
Oh, and Marion Galbraith. Okay. Yeah. And, and she's doing a presentation at Thrive on October 3rd, I think it is, about the project, just for people's interest. Okay. All right. I like the idea. I like the idea if you incorporate the, the you know, the park is kind of that that space plus the um, the stuff in the back. You now you could even maybe incorporate a signage into that design when it comes out. I don't think that's bad. I mean, you know, um, my opinion, like a like a submarine park or something, right? And you can people can vote on the names or pick out however we do that. But uh, I like the idea of kind of combining them all that all those features into one. Especially with the library and Thrive forming kind of a community nucleus already. I agree with everyone. All the words that are said, Sailors Park or whatever, but it's it sounds great. And Mark, maybe if they're doing an info, like if there's something on the third or something, maybe if there's if there's any public engagement sessions on on these items right forget about the park we just talked about but like on that that, that you know the submarine thing up front if there's a public engagement session on the pickleball i, I don't know what's out there but you know not a bad idea on that session just to throw a, a recommendation sheet for people to stick sticky notes for potential names right it's a good good maybe right. outreach way but open for suggestions mike that's a great idea yeah i think we can we hadn't planned a, a public presentation for this particular project, um, but I'm sure that we can um, get some community feedback um, one way or another with, with the idea of, of naming, kind of pulling in what's happening up front uh, into what's taking place in the back. Yeah, and we don't want to make more work for you, Mark. So if they're doing a presentation on summary, maybe that's something that, you know, you or one of us attend and then just, you know, do a, hey, by the way, there's other stuff going in here. We're looking for some name stuff, any recommendation, you know, a three-minute pitch in that. This way we're not duplicating or making more work for everyone. Right. Yeah, I'm not, um, I don't know if that committee that's focused on, on that project up front, you know, had the idea of, naming that as a park um, or, or or what uh, they they may want that as a standalone facility I, I I'm not sure I I can check with uh, and I, I think Kent and Frost are the landscape architects that are involved with the design the conceptual design of that and so I can I can ask Chad if um, that's something that's been discussed and and see how receptive they they may be to that idea. Okay, moving along. Uh, the recreation management plan. I think we already did that. And, and uh, looks like we're pretty much there, Mark. Yeah, so I... Um, Again, the letter of recommendation, um, I don't know how the council, uh, I'm sorry, the commission feels about that. I certainly would encourage the commission to draft a letter to the council. Uh, again, supporting that the council uh, adopt the, the plan, um, but that's entirely up to you. Mm -hmm. When would you want that, Mark? Uh, I, I don't have, I, I know they're going to the council. The, Barry Dunn is making a presentation on the 26th. And then right now the plan is to go back to the council, try to get them to adopt it. And I I don't remember the date of the, it could be October 24th. So it would be prior, prior to that. I don't, I'm sorry, I don't remember. I can't remember the, uh, the date. Oh, it would be a few weeks. That's what I was thinking that I think, speaking of myself. Yeah. 
I needed a little bit more time to think about it, the whole plan, uh, the pieces of it. Not that I have any reservations about the plan, just in order to make a well-reasoned recommendation. Yes, uh, yeah. and okay. it would be going back to the council for the second time would be after the October 12th 24th March. meeting. 24th, okay. All right. So, so there would be time after there'd be time for the commission to review and make comments around the October 12th commission meeting. Okay. Uh, and still time to go to the council. Uh, go Before the 24th. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. Elizabeth, are you looking to uh, uh, jot some things down as on the letterhead there? Yeah, you were kind of read between the lines. I would, yeah, I would I, certainly help you. Okay, good. Yeah, if you guys send something out, I don't mind like taking a peek at it, give me any comment. You know, maybe we just put a like four signature lines below it or something. Just put your know, committee member, and then we all just put our name and sign if you want to. Um, I'm mm -hmm. good with that. Sounds good. good. A bit of new uh, business, uh, Mark. Um, was I, I had the opportunity to uh, lead a group of people, uh, Tom Olson being one of them, and two members of GOSA uh, around the Sparkle Lake area. And they did seem very interested in um, helping uh, create other trails there. So I'm, I'm not sure as to what the next step might be if you'd have any suggestions, Mark. So Dan um, O'Connell, the president of GOSA sent me kind of a- Dan was one of them, that's right. And then yes. Tom Olson was another. Right, and, and I think jo Joan Smith, Yeah, I think, yes. Uh, and I'm not sure who else. Uh, there, there was other one other woman there. Yes, I yeah. Um, uh, yeah, Dan sent me a list of um, items that he, the recommendations for that property and offered support from GOSA to initiate some of those. And um, I said that, you know, some of the work um, could be done by the park staff, but with the grass, we're still it's like springtime. I mean, they're cutting grass all the time. It's just right, right, so, right. still growing and growing. And so I said it would be later this fall that we would have more time to um, kind of take a look at those recommendations and actually be able to implement some and, and utilize, um, you know, his group to do some of the other work. Oh, that'd be great. Uh, what yeah. I did is I showed them the trails that are existing. Yes. And then, and then one that would be uh, one that we would need their help in designing or whatever. But Right. Yeah, yeah I yeah. think the, the plan would be to like flag out a trail and then have the parks guys come in and, you know, clear that area based on where the flagging is. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Well, I'm glad they, they got a hold of you. Although yes. they did say something about a, the sign. The yes. sign in front and, you know, right. it, didn't, it didn't acknowledge uh, something, uh, I don't know, uh, the state or whatever. Yes, there was some state funding uh, from a grant and the grant, one of the conditions of the grant is that the funder funding source is recognized on the sign. And so that's something that we need to add to the sign. That, and, it's, um, and it's at another property as well, isn't it? It is, yes. It, yeah. Actually, Joan was at the Trails Coordinating Task Force meeting today and mentioned two or three other parcels that we need to have uh, add that signage. 
Yeah, can, isn't it something that you could just attach to it? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. We'll just we'll, we'll just put it between the the two posts uh, yeah. for the existing Good. signs. Yep. Good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any other new business, folks? Okay. It sounds like uh, we're we're all set. Anybody like to make a mo oh, our next meeting date is what? Uh, the next meeting is October 12th. 12th, great. And and as I mentioned, um, I am going to be at a conference, but will uh, remote in by my phone. Okay. And uh, I also wanted to let everybody know that we have booked a room in the Mystic River Middle School for the November 9th meeting, which was scheduled to be an in-person meeting. And, you know, Mike had asked that we kind of do it in different places. And uh, the Mystic River Middle School is where we ran our summer camp this year. So I figured that was an appropriate space to uh, to have the meeting. Okay. All right, thanks, Mike. Yep. Sounds good. Um, anything else? Thank you, everyone. And we'll see you October 12th. We need a motion, Dom. Oh. Pardon? We need a motion to adjourn. Would anybody like to make that motion? Sure. I'll make a motion to adjourn and close out the meeting. Sounds good. And I'll second the motion. So moved. Now you have to vote. OK. Thank you. All in favor? Okay. Bye. 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 <laughs> Have a good night, everyone. All right. Good Thank night. you all.